A devoted wife and mother, a doting grandmother. Joyce was a wonderful woman. Joyce. 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 This is Claire, one of Joyce's oldest friends. They were at college together. Claire. Howard, I'm gonna kill you. Now that she's gone, I'm gonna do it this weekend. Evelyn, I need to talk to you. About what? I told him I was gonna kill him. I could chat. It's been four and a half decades. Feels like it was yesterday. You were delusional. She told me you were cruel. So, what's the plan, Scarface? I'm gonna buy a gun. It was cute. Very. Wanna hold it? And I'm gonna take it to the wake. How's the recoil? Recoil? I'm not gonna lie, it has a little kick. Well, darn it, we tried. Do you have any poison? I have a cyanide pill in case I'm captured by the enemy. You can have it. I want you to tell the truth. I am shocked by your utter selfishness. You blame me for what happened in your own marriage. I think you were not built for happiness. <laughs> I'm in. You're in what? My other murder canceled this week, so I've got time. I've missed you. You had my number. Well, you had my number. So we're both lousy friends. Oh, Christ. Dad! Why, why are you carrying that knife? Oh, I was gonna stab someone. <laughs> <laughs> Crab cakes? Who is it? It's Ralph. I slept with him last night. Do you have a condom? I don't want to get knocked up. <laughs> <laughs>By the way, just as a uh, footnote, uh, I, I moved up to the Hudson Valley not that long ago, and I, I'm friends with Nick Flynn. Oh, wow. Oh, man. He, so he, I he's see, him all, see him, you know, once at least once or twice a year. <laughs> oh, wow, that's cool. I love Nick. Yeah, he's a very good guy. Um, yeah, I live pretty close by now to where they've got a, a really nice spot. Up here. Nice. Yeah. Um, and, and just also, we'll get to moving on, which, uh, you know, is your latest uh, film you wrote, directed, and it stars Jane Fonda and uh, uh, Lily Tomlin and Malcolm McDowell and Richard Roundtree. And uh, it opens on uh, March 17th in theaters. Isn't that yep. nice? Yeah. Uh, just also, I have to ask, though, you went to Wesleyan. Uh, yeah. You took film classes from J Janine Bassinger. Is that true? Uh, yeah, basically. Well, Basinger? Yeah. How was that experience for you? Um, I mean, it was great. It was great having a female mentor. Um, she was uh, utterly <laughs> utterly unpretentious while at the same time being incredibly exacting. Um, I think, you know, she she came from like the business world. Like um, she, she, huh. she sort of created the program there and uh, film yeah. studies was not really a sort of considered a, a valid academic pursuit um, at the time when she was sort of creating that program. And, uh, and now it's a huge, you know, huge uh, department in Wesleyan. Um, and Janine, I mean, it's like, it was a combination of utter love for the medium with um, very little patience for being a fool. And by being a fool, I mean, like, if you damaged a print while putting it on the projector, or, um, you know, um, well, that, she would that, yell that, at that's me. <laughs> yeah, because you were shooting on film, of course, 16 millimeter. Well, we were shooting on film, and then also, like, you know, we were um, showing films all the time. Right. And, you know, we get prints, you know. Um, and, uh, yeah, shooting on film, cutting on film, yeah. Um, well, thanks for sharing about that. And, and also, just because you, obviously, this is now your third project with Lily Tomlin, and I was wondering, maybe you could just talk a little bit also about that relationship, because uh, it sounds like she really, uh, really has a lot of respect for your work. I mean, you were 
She had a uh, supporting role in Admission, which was the first time you guys had worked together, correct? And then uh, you ended up writing Grandma, which is uh, was a, a a lot of fun, a festival favorite. I remember seeing that in a festival. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and uh, and then then she is it true? She asked you, or or rather, she was a conduit, right? That Jane uh, Jane Fonda was interested in did some work yeah. looking into your career and then said oh he should write us a project even though we yeah, just yeah, six yeah. Year, they, uh, they, like a 10 year long netflix series that yeah yeah no, they, they called me probably from the set of grace and frankie and they said okay i'm sitting here with jane and we feel like you should write us a film and that uh, i kind of lodged in my head and um uh and then i had this idea really just an idea of kind of what's basically the opening scene of the movie where somebody is at a funeral and there's the widower and people are coming up and giving condolences and saying we're so sorry for your loss and she was a lovely woman and we love you come have dinner and then a woman comes up and says well now that she's gone i'm going to kill you i'm going to do it this yeah. weekend and then she moves on um and i was like oh wait that's jane fonda who says that and um and she needs lily tomlin to help her do it and kind of be her comrade in arms so um it was those two things coming together like the idea and then and then Lily calling about about the two of them. So the premise came to you. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, yeah. I mean, tonally, you could have gone in, in many different directions here. It's kind of and tricky, right? Because <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it is tricky. Really dark. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, there's there's aspects of, you know, seeing it in a movie theater, which I've now gotten to do a few times, it plays like a flat out comedy. Like if you had to chart like the noise of the audience. Um like, you know, I started out doing American Pie, so I have like a, you know, um, you know, that was sort of the heyday of people going to see comedies and theaters. Um, but, uh, you know, I had to think, okay, why does Jane want to kill him? Like, what did he do to her? And um, uh, how seriously I might have taken this? And it kind of follows through to its furthest conclusions on a com comedic level and then also on a dramatic level. Uh, I don't think it pulls a ripcord on either. Yeah, because um, it is, a, I'm, I'm, I know I have to be very cautious how I speak about it, obviously, um, how uh, we can speak in, in general terms. Uh, yeah. or, you know, you have a, <clears throat> a responsibility, right? Yeah. Because of the subject matter, as, as it unfolds, as we learn what happens, which, by yeah. the way, is the entire course of the film. It really unravels slowly, this story, mm -hmm. which is, I think a risky choice to make, but it worked out. Um, I think, you know, yeah. well, uh, but cause you know, you've got like a 80, 85, 90, but I'm, I'm not sure at the running length, but you know, <laughs> you've got to kind of keep things moving and keep, yeah. uh, you know, the arc, you know, uh, suspended or whatever. So, but I think you did a great job with that, but that's where all those other films you wrote come in, I guess. Thank you. I mean, that's a relief. Um, you know, I, in terms of the the sort of you know the the, the dr dramatic aspect of the subject, a lot of it was you know making sure Jane felt that it was appropriate and not fake, and that you know um, that I was being treated respectfully. Um, yeah, I mean, look, the films that I loved um, uh, that were inspiring to me included like The Apartment by Billy Wilder, which has a suicide attempt in it. Shirley MacLaine tries to commit yeah. suicide during Yeah, and um, Wilder managed to do that quite well. It's a high bar. In his own way, like The Graduate, you know, it's pretty much about um, depression and consumerism. Um, and uh, so I, I like sort of trying to do something which might seem ill-advised, um, but uh, uh, yeah, but, and yeah. Yeah. So look, I mean, see some of it is like, look, it, honestly, like when I was doing this initially, when I was first getting financing for it, I had a couple of people say, well, you can get a lot more money for this if you, if you tinker with it and don't have, you know, don't have certain things in it. Um, but I was like, it's going to be less dramatic and it's also going to be fake. So, you know, yeah. Um, and, and also given, I'm a, I think we're around the same age. So I uh, think we both probably had this, many similar films had impact on us. I know you talked about also Clute being something yeah. that, you know, I mean, I just showed it to my girlfriend for the first time not that long ago. And it's, wow. every time I see it, I discover, it's like, you know, I discover so much more. It also happened, I just, we watched 
uh, Apocalypse Now before because she's a teacher and it was, and then we watched Rear Window. It's like <laughs> you keep seeing these films that have um, that I've seen many times, but I could swear how did I not pick up on this element of it? You know, I know. Um, and the amazing. apartment certainly is in there too. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, but I guess I brought that up because now here you have these four icons, um, yeah. and it's hard to get past that. Uh, as as sometimes as a viewer, but tell me as a director, you're working with Richard yeah. Rauchy, that's Shaft for Pete's sake. Yeah. yeah. You're working with, uh, um, you know, Malcolm McDowell, <laughs> who uh, you had to have been terrified about uh, or of. I mean, uh, I'm absolutely thinking of their iconography and um, and thinking of the, the films that people are going to be thinking of. I mean, Malcolm happens to be a complete sweetheart in real life. I mean, he's just kind of an imp. Um, uh, you know, he really likes to play around and he's still got that like kid in him. Yes. Um, but yeah, the idea that this is Alex from Clockwork Orange, um, I thought would be useful for this. And actually, interestingly, Jane Fonda had not met Malcolm in person uh, prior to doing the movie and she didn't want to meet him. She was yeah. like, would, would it be okay if I don't, you know, say hi to him um, until our characters meet in the movie? That's so amazing. I kept them separate. I kept them separate for the first couple of days. And um, and then Malcolm at some point was like, how long is this going to go on for? Like, she's glaring at me across the room. Um, I, I, you know, but, well, but she wanted to. Building a, 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 a kitchen knife. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then Richard Roundtree, you know, I think in the back of your head is like, this guy is really cool. Um, and he's he's got like such a sort of um, a gracefulness to him and yeah. a, a sweetness. And it's interesting that, you know, action movies have come a long distance. Because I think Richard's sort of uh, uh, kindness is in Shaft, you know, it's an action movie, but, but um, you're really drawn to him. And I was like, well, okay, who has Jane Fonda not played opposite? You know, who would it be interesting to see as her ex-husband? And uh, and thought of Richard. It was really nice. I it was so um, it's so great to see him because he doesn't do a lot, unless I'm mistaken. Yeah. Um, no. Yeah. He he's he he still acts though, and, um, yeah. and I knew he was still quite sharp. Oh my goodness! Forget it. He's uh, very youthful. Um, just to just to pivot back to Malcolm McDowell for a minute. Yeah. Though, I, I want to share that when I was growing up and I was a little kid, uh, my parents had the soundtrack to A Clockwork Orange. Oh, God. I don't know what they were doing with it, but it was, you know, I would look at it and it was like, you know, they, they and the, from their anecdotes about going to see it and how disturbing it was, I really kind of got into my fiber. I was terrified for many years to see A Clockwork Orange because of that. And you know what? When I saw it, it's terrifying. It was upsetting. Yeah. It was disturbing. But the album cover, I don't know if you ever saw it, but it had like photos, uh, you know, of Alex torturing, essentially torturing or, you know, uh, whatever, uh, you know, and, 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 and it was somewhat tantalizing because there was like a nude photo of a woman that he was, you know, doing, and it was really something confusing for a little kid. So, um, and yeah. then you put it on and it's, it's singing in the rain. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, which apparently he sort of improvised and then they had to, you know, right. go, go next to it. Um, yeah, no, yeah, isn't it the case that like Kubrick or somebody uh, bought the rights back in England and didn't want it shown for a while because there was a period where it was being blamed for sort of copycat crimes and stuff? Oh, yeah, I, we didn't realize that. Yeah, I think so. I yeah, no, that's a, that's a, that's a scary movie, but Malcolm is, it's, yeah. Right, yeah. it's, it's, it works. Uh, and uh, there's uh, a new documentary, I think it's, in broad, I saw it in broadcast length, so, but it's called Kubrick by Kubrick. And I think oh, wow. that documentary filmmaker's gonna do this uh, show soon. Uh, oh, cool. But I, you know, the casting is, is really great. And um, again, the name of the film is- I was called, moving on, sorry. Were you going to say oh, the sorry. name of the film? Oh, yeah, I was. Yeah, so oh, it's, it's oh, called. It wasn't a question. It wasn't a question. Oh, no, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I don't mind that. You can co-host. <laughs> um, and it, uh, it's it's uh, again, it's opening in, in theaters on March 17th. And now you mentioned you've been at some screenings. So was that at festivals? Yeah, it was at festivals, and also I did one screening just a you know at a at a normal theater. Right. Um, 
at one of those research screenings. Um, I but yeah, I've seen it in some festivals now. Yeah, and are, are you in Los Angeles? Yeah, I'm in Los Angeles. So are you gonna are you gonna be at like a screening on uh, this Friday? Um, yeah, normally I go by a theater. I, I guess I will. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. So it's not like it's it's official though. You may just stop. Oh no, sorry. Oh, you mean like a Q and A? No, I, yeah. I don't. I don't think okay. so. Yeah. But it is right. But that's a good. It, it, interesting to to know that you might be if you're if you're watching and you go see this uh, movie in L. A. this Friday. Uh, just so you know, the, the director might be standing in the back or something <laughs> like yeah, you know. around. Yeah. Um, no, it's a lot of fun to see these pros. My God. Uh, and I, we don't have nearly enough time uh, to talk about what it must be like to work with them. But I assume they're all just really, I, I imagine, really just great and trusting. And I mean, I have to just imagine it was just a, a great experience for you. Um, it was, yeah. And, um, uh, you know, Lily and Jane are very funny with each other. Yeah. Uh, they're, they give each other a hard time if somebody drops a line or something or doesn't come in with their cue at the right time um but they're also you know they really love each other and that's well yeah i mean they doing. played a, a strange friends in it but they are giving each other a hard time and within that maybe lily lily's character a little bit more than jane's but yeah. uh, it, it's fun to see lily in a different mode yeah for sure very yeah. different from her show yeah yeah um anyway uh Great to uh, sit with you. I'd love to do it again. You know, maybe on a future project, it would be. Thank uh, you. Uh, it would be a lot of fun to kind of find out more about you and your career. Uh, you yeah, know, in those years in Wesleyan. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I like the whole career of Ilya Kazan is something of a uh, of a subject for me. So it's oh, that's like cool. Armchair film historian and the oh, whole yeah. library is it's at the library there. Right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah anyway, yeah. Uh, well, good luck with the film. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah, you got it. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Thanks.